2023 was an incredible reading year for me. I read 143 books and I discovered some of my favorite books of all time. I also read some of the most disappointing books I have ever read. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sam. Welcome to my best and worst books of 2023, where I'm gonna be showing you five of my absolute favorite books that I read this year and five of the most disappointing reads from this year. Last night, I sat down and went through every single book that I read in 2022 and tried to determine what the best books and the worst books were. The worst books was actually pretty easy. I felt pretty strongly about the books that I chose for this and I didn't find that list hard to make. The best books, however, was difficult and the final product actually surprised me a lot. So before we get into the 10 books that we're going to talk about, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon will notify you when I post. I post on Sundays and Wednesdays around 9am Eastern Standard Time. Let's talk about the best books that I read in 2022. So disclaimer, this list is in no particular order. This is not like number one, number two, number three. Like, I, I literally, I tried to do that honestly. I can't. So these are in no particular order. They're just the five books that I thought were the best books that I read this year, last year. To start off this list, I'm gonna go with The Final Empire. This is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. This is an adult fantasy, high fantasy, epic fantasy. Um, it is very long, very intense, and super fun. We are basically following a band of thieves, I guess. It's, it kind of reminded me of Six of Crows for a minute there, but y'all know I hated Six of Crows, so like, better. Um, basically, we're following a band of thieves, and they, instead of like, a heist to steal something they are trying to overthrow the government and save the world basically um it gets so much more intense from there I can't even I couldn't explain the plot of this book if I wanted to like I, I, I really can't if it helps when I went to read the second book there's an entire like five or six pages at the back of the second book that gives you a recap of book one because there are so many things in here that nobody can be expected to remember all of that when they go to read the second book so it's complex but I really really enjoyed it I thought the world building was amazing the magic system is super unique I just I mean it was a slow start I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it the first like 200 pages or so because I wasn't used to adult fantasy I wasn't used to epic fantasy and I ended up absolutely adoring the entire series I know that there's a sequel series I really want to read it and I cannot wait to read more of this author just in general Next up, we have Fairy Tale by Stephen King. I really didn't think a Stephen King book would ever make this list. Um, and yet here we are. And I have very little explanation for myself. Um, basically, this is a portal fantasy that follows a teenage boy who rescues an old man when he gets injured and ends up being his caretaker and then the old man dies and leaves him this tape recording explaining the shed out back and the secrets behind it and the fantasy world that is underneath it basically um this book was like heartbreaking <laughs> it was it was very well written that was what i really liked about it it was very atmospheric um there's a dog that's like a main character and the whole first half of the book revolving around that dog was just <laughs> There were moments where I was just like, if this doesn't end well, I'm going to riot. Um, it, it was hard to get through the first half. It's very, very dark. It's a very dark fantasy, but it also has like moments of whimsy, especially with some of the fantasy characters. Once you get into that fantasy world, it has like a very middle grade whimsical vibe while being very dark and very adult and very... Um, like this is not a middle grade book, but it has that, that whimsical middle grade fairy tale type of feel, but in a much darker way. And I just thought that was the most interesting, like blend of writing that I have read in a long time. And I really, really enjoyed it. It, it is also very long and it is also very good. And I would highly recommend it. And that surprised me a lot, honestly. Next up is another book that surprised me because while I did like it, I really didn't think it was gonna make top five when I read it. But the more I think about it, the more I think it did. So that is The Deal by L. Kennedy. This book follows our main character, Hannah. And Hannah 
is like a straight A student in college um but she she's trying to get her crush's attention so she ends up offering or agreeing to tutor Garrett who is a hockey player and in return he is going to help her get her crush's attention. Obviously that does not go the way that they planned um at all. This is the first book in like a romance companion book series type of thing all set in the same college with this group of friends um and all the different relationships that come out of that. I really really liked the series. Honestly I feel like I haven't actually finished the series. I need to read the fourth and fifth book, but the first three, I liked all of them pretty much the same. So I feel like I'm holding up the deal, but you could probably put all three of them in like one top five favorite because I just really liked the series in general. I'm not sure that I'm going to feel that way about the fourth book because the fourth book is a trope that I'm not a personal fan of, but the first three... I really enjoyed. It made me really excited to read more sports romances, more college romances, and more L. Kennedy, honestly. Next up, we had Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Maas. I finally finished this series last year. I started it in 2021, read the first four, and then put the series down because honestly I was bored um, for the rest of the last year. And I finally picked it up early last year and raced through the last three books. Like books five, six, and seven, I loved every single one of them. And this book was just so... It's like a really fun epic fantasy romance. I loved every part of it. There were so many heartbreaking moments, so many like heart stopping moments. It really felt like you were watching a movie. Like you know that feeling you get when you're watching like Lord of the Rings in like those fight scenes? I got that feeling through like the majority of this book and I love that feeling. So I will for sure be rereading this series in the future because I absolutely loved it, but I might start at book three and I might even skip book four. Because really I only liked three, five, six, and seven. But that's okay. Last for my top five favorite books of 2022, we have The War of Two Queens, which I know had a lot of mixed reviews. I am well aware of that. Um, I recognize that her books could use some editing, that there are some mistakes and things like that. I get that. I also recognize that the series absolutely could have been a trilogy and just been done and it does not need to be six books. I agree with that. Am I mad that it's this many books? No. Um, no. I am a character person, not so much a plot person. I like those fluffy moments that fill up these books. I like those things that slow the plot down, the character moments. So whereas other people want something more fast paced and they're getting very frustrated that these books are like dragging, I like that. So that doesn't bother me. Plus we had the joining, which was a life-changing moment for me. Um, and I really just felt like the plot was stronger in this book than in the previous book anyways. I do think that the third book was the weakest of the series. And this book, I feel like, ramped it up. Like we got back to a good mix of plot versus character versus smut, honestly. I just have this one as well. And I really like the tabs that I am seeing, but did highly enjoy this one. Cannot wait for the next one. I just, I'm both nervous and very excited. So this one was always going to make that list. One book that didn't make this list that kind of surprised me because the first book is one of my favorite books of all time was House of Sky and Breath. It was close. This was probably like top six. I almost put this one on, but I do feel like this book was a lot weaker than the first book and while that ending more than made up for everything and made me like absolutely excited to read the third book and while there were still moments in this book that were amazing I do feel like this book did drag a lot. Um, I feel like it didn't need to be this long and I didn't feel like it was as intense as the first book. Like I didn't feel like as much was at stake as I did in the first book. I didn't have those same attachments to everybody as I did in the first book. And it just didn't feel as epic as the first book. So it didn't make top five. Mostly because it just didn't. I don't know. It, it, it just didn't reach the first book. So that knocked it down a peg. Even though it was still a five star read for me, the first book, if I could, it would be like 45 stars. So 
I also should have said that I did not include rereads in this list. That is why House of Earth and Blood is not on this list because even though I did read it in 2022 and it is absolutely a top five book of like my life, um, I read it for the first time in 2020. So since it was a reread, I didn't count that. Moving right along, we are gonna talk about my most disappointing reads from 2022. I do wanna preface this by saying these are my opinions. You are absolutely welcome to love these books. Just because I didn't click with them doesn't mean you won't. No hate to any of the authors. Just because I didn't click with the book doesn't mean it's a bad book. It just means that I didn't like it. And that is, that's fine. Not everybody's gonna like the same books and that's okay. Starting off, we have The Princess Will Save You. This is by Sarah Henning and we are following kind of like a retelling but gender reversal of The Princess Bride. So we have a princess whose father dies and she is going to be forced to marry um, because she's a woman so she can't take the throne unless she's married. Um, and in order to coerce her into marrying a certain prince from another kingdom, they kidnap her best friend and secret love, um, Luca? Yes, Luca. Um, and she has to go rescue him. I feel like this book had a lot of potential and where it lost me was the whole premise of this book is that our main character is like the super strong feminist, doesn't need a man, doesn't need help, can rule on her own, like should be queen, shouldn't have to get married type of girl. Um, she's not gonna let a man tell her what to do. She's not gonna let anybody tell her what to do. And um, she's actually incredibly weak, ends up letting everybody tell her what to do, gets herself into trouble every three pages, makes a lot of really dumb decisions, and does very little rescuing, honestly. It's like this this character that was promised was not what we got at all. And that frustrated me a lot. So I just, I was bored for most of it. A lot of the conflict was really just our main character doing something dumb and getting herself into trouble. Um, so it was kind of just frustrating to read, honestly. It is a trilogy. I don't know if I'm going to bother to read the rest of the series. I said I was going to read the second book, but I've also heard that it really doesn't get better. So... Plus, I mean, some of the reveals at the end of the first book kind of tell me that it's not going to get better. So I don't know. I, I kind of doubt I'm going to continue this one. Next up, we have Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I feel like Riley Sager is a very hit or miss author for me. I have loved some of his books and they've been five star reads and then some of them just fell flat for me. This was one of the ones that fell flat. This follows our main character, um, Jules, and she is having a lot of financial trouble and she gets offered this job, apartment sitting in this very ritzy, very mysterious, very like, can't know who lives there because they're so rich that they need their privacy type of thing um building and so she literally just has to live in this apartment for 12 weeks and she will get like twelve thousand dollars at the end of it um and that's it however there are some really strange things about this building and about the residents in the building um one of the there's another apartment sitter in the building and she goes missing and nobody believes jules when jules says that this is kind of suspicious and so she's kind of like investigating that and trying to figure out what's going on Personally, it wasn't bad. I gave the book three stars. I do think I have kind of revamped my rating system for this year and I do think that if I were to re-rate it, it would probably end up closer to the two star range for me. Um, there were moments that I liked, but there were a lot more moments that I didn't like. I felt like it didn't feel like a mystery to me. I felt like we didn't really have any questions for most of it. Um, I was kind of hoping for some twists that didn't happen, I was kind of hoping for more of a desperation in me to like know what was happening next to like keep going and I didn't really get that. It just, it just kind of fell flat for me honestly. And I've loved some of his other books but this one just, it didn't work for me. Next up we have You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen M. McManus and it hurt me to put this book on this list because Karen M. McManus is one of my favorite authors of all time. But this book just, 
it didn't reach the level of her other books. It, it just didn't. This book follows Ivy, Mateo, and Cal, and they all used to be really good friends back in like middle school, and now they're in high school. They don't really talk to each other anymore, um, but they are all running late to school one day, and they all end up deciding to skip school together. And they end up at this building where they find one of their classmates dead. Um, so suddenly they're in the middle of this investigation. Each of them has a connection to the dead student and everybody has secrets. It sounded really good and it wasn't bad. It just, again, it just felt flat to me. I felt like her other books were stronger and maybe if I had read this without having read her other books, I would have rated it higher because it's not necessarily a bad book. It's just like, I know she can do better because she has done better. This one just didn't work for me. It just didn't, I didn't feel like the reveal was anything special. I didn't feel like the secrets were really worth knowing. Yeah, it just, it just didn't live up to my expectations of this author. Next up, we have Lore Olympus Volume 1. Um, I wanted to like this book. I think one, I'm really not a Hades and Persephone lover. I've read a few Hades and Persephone's books now and none of them have ever reached five stars for me. It's just not a story that I am really all that attached to. Um, I feel like the art style, while it is a beautiful art style and like very well done, it didn't work for me. It wasn't my art style preferences. Um, and it's not that it's bad art, it's phenomenal art. It just wasn't working for me. The story wasn't really working for me. And I don't think that's necessarily the author's fault. I really just think that it's, I'm not really a Hades and Persephone person. I don't really care for the story all that much. And then since the art style didn't really work for me, I just didn't really have a desire to keep going. So I probably won't read, I know there's like four volumes now. I probably won't read the rest, but you never know. Next up we have a book that I actually unhauled because I really didn't like it that much and that is Defending Taylor by Miranda Kennelly. This book follows Taylor and basically she does something stupid at her private school and gets herself into trouble, gets kicked out and has to go to public school and that is just the absolute worst thing that could ever happen to anybody in the whole entire world is having to go to public school. Um, it's supposed to be a best friend or a brother's best friend romance. I mean, kind of. Honestly, Taylor was just insufferable. She was supposed to be like the perfect girl. Like she was a straight A student and in every club possible and captain of the soccer team. And now she has to go to the dirty, awful public school and her whole life falls apart because she's not special anymore. She was just annoying, honestly. The romance was not believable. Um, it wasn't even really, like I, I, I didn't care about the romance. I didn't like either character and Taylor annoyed me so much that I just wanted to throw the book honestly. That was the only one star review I had this year because normally if it's gonna be one star I just DNF it but that book was so short I just pushed through thinking hopefully it would get better by the end. It, it did not. It did not. And it was really just because the main character was so insufferable I just I mm, mm. All right, so those are my best and worst books of 2022. What are y'all's best and worst books of 2022? Let me know down in the comments what's the best book you read in 2022 and what's the worst book you read because I am super curious to know. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!